You know? Yeah. That's so, it. I, I, well, I kind of figured so I should have Dim Brown's Blue Lamb. Brown's not here today, huh? You know, Dim Blue Lamb. Brown's not here today, huh? Brown? Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing I, I have one. Yeah, of they, I think they call him Jaywalking Brown, but he does a lot of jaywalking arrests. He, I know he works downtown a lot. He was yeah. at the uh, march the other day. Yeah. Tall, oh, I know what you guy. Mean. Yeah, yeah, Robert, yeah. Robert, yeah. Anytime somebody's guy. filming, he likes to stop him for jaywalking. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, filming is not something that's against the law, so especially when we're doing our business in public. So. Yeah, that's good. Oh, look. Poor uh, kids are here. Guys, yeah, so that was a that was a long walk for you guys. I, the courthouse probably wasn't as far. I mean, but I don't. I think it's an easier walk too. I thought it was. Yeah. I like um, this. The big thing was that the, uh, my concern on those things always is uh, the way people drive. You know what I mean? And every, all those people out there, the kids out there. You know, it's, you know somebody getting hit by a car. Is, it's, it's such a risk. But, uh, I think I bet it went out, broke down. No, I mean. I'm sure you understand, you know, things are different, you know, there's more concerns now, so, you know, the, the, the yeah. route changed in response, I mean, people are not happy about the way things are going, and really want to be heard. Yeah. Well, and that's I mean, the big thing, is, uh, as, as a police department, it's, our job is to be neutral, and it's to make sure that you're right to protest, and one of the things that you're allowed to do, obviously, and uh, just make sure that you guys are safe while you do it. Because for every group that protests, there's another group that has a different view. And, you know, when those groups start to show up and clash with each other, thankfully it doesn't happen too often. But, uh, you, know, you get the opposing view shows up, and it just gets, that has the potential to be ugly. So, uh, but it's getting you to wherever it is that they wanted to go the other night. It turned out to be Trump. You know, our job is make sure you get there, get there safely. So this is super attractive. I'll to protest. I like that. I thought there was more of a crowd. It was a good crowd, though. I mean, uh, it seemed like there was a mixture of people with different causes no, and different groups. Right, that's what I'm saying. We were, so, there were a lot of different groups that joined together. I mean, and there might have been even people that had opposite views, but you never see any issues. Well, that's the beautiful thing about the United States of America, right, is uh, peaceful protest. You know, it's, it's something that's allowed to do, allowed to voice your opinion, allowed to film, right? So, it's yeah. so are you like the main supervisor downtown? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you know about the incident in November where somebody was arrested in Philadelphia? Uh, it seemed on like a success, so I would assume yes. Give me the more details. Do you know who the officer was? I know it was a big Samoan guy. I didn't. I've never actually gotten his name. Yeah, it was behind the Neonopolis, I think, yep. was it? Yeah. yeah. So I think that was uh, an internal affairs investigation. Mm -hmm. That officer doesn't work downtown. Just say, I mean, everyone was assigned here for that night because it was a Friday night. We were bringing oh, sorry, it's the first Friday of a month, so the first Friday is a busy night. So That's when you guys usually sweep down there. Yeah, they come down, we bring people from other area commands to help so us. With other staff, area so commands don't have that same it's okay to film kind of thing. You know, we're all, we, we should all know that it's okay. So is that... So I think that's an ongoing internal affairs case. So, so they... Well, they did close it. Did they? Supposedly, sure. somebody sat him down and gave him a stern talking to, so... That wouldn't be you then, because... No, it wasn't me. Because you're no, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Is no, that something you would address, though? Mm -hmm. yeah, in I mean, light it's, of somebody it's, being it's arrested obvious. for something yeah, else? We, I, I, we address it over and over and over again. It's, it's obvious that that's... Unless it's you know, a safety issue or it's interfering with something where the safety is involved. Yeah. But it's interesting. I mean, have you seen the video? Yeah, I saw it when it first happened because everybody <laughs> thought he worked for me and I looked at it and I said, oh, yeah, I don't like, you know. Not mine. Did you see how many people walked behind him while he was harassing the cameraman? And I don't remember. Almost ran the into the particular. I don't remember all the particulars. Yeah. Of it, but it was a pretty good video. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too is that's what yeah. we, we when it comes to dealing even with the mainstream we'll media, you know, remembering you know wherever we allow the public, that's where people come. I don't know how to describe. You know? So, like I said, when it comes to safety issues on crime scenes and things like that, we allow a news camera to move from this side of the tape to that side of the tape, then we basically said that that's okay. That's okay for the media. That's okay for the general public. That's most, Right. So, I know you say you don't remember all the details, but offhand you didn't see anything yeah. inappropriate with the way the person I don't know was filming. If that, you guys say that case is done. I can't comment on a, what I still know to be an ongoing yeah. internal affairs case. Well, I, I mean, um, from some of the things that I've heard, is that it was a pretty clear cut, you know, the, the way it went down. Would you guys consider using 
that film since it is public as kind of like a training video. Yeah, and that's I the mean, problem when things become use... the challenge when things become internal investigations is we can talk about the policies, we can talk about the things related to it, but using evidence from an internal affairs case. Uh, I mean, we typically don't do as far as the actual. We can use the example. We can use the narrative of what occurred, but actually using. So the you video, wouldn't just show the video and say, "Don't you know, do we this." probably could. I guess it's not a bad idea. I mean, it would be a good example of what you know, if, yeah. you know from your perspective, of what not to do. <laughs> so, um, well, and we've had incidents way. before, and we've used. There's been that incidents before where that's anything. happened, and officers uh, have been uh, held accountable for that type of stuff. Where we've used the videos, but that's why. I I don't know. I haven't seen anything come out after that one, so I don't know that it's done. Yeah. Still you got another one? I need to go, yeah. I could see you. Thank you. You're still going for some pizza. All right. Hey, also, uh, so for this, you know, I saw on Facebook, I ordered some shirt and get yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Good. All right, okay. need to keep it Next time, I'll take pictures. All right. Thank you. See you later. I know you got enough of me already anyway. All right, well, I'm going to keep walking around. Do you, do you happen to know what, what department that guy works in? Uh, Down here? I think he was either Northwest Area Command or Golden Area Command. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. All right, maybe this. No, I'll give you guys my car, too, because if you have yeah, stuff that you want me to address or deal with, uh, I understand you're still going to do what it is you do. Um, but don't hesitate to email me and say, hey, we're doing this, or we're going to talk about that, or... You know, who what is it that you believe that we did? <laughs> uh, I think you guys go out. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I, uh, I think you push out information about things that you see that, from your perspective, the police do wrong and the police could do better, uh, especially since we are public servants and we work for the community. Uh, and I believe in the Sir Robert Peel principles that the police are the community and the community are the police. And uh, I think what you guys do is create awareness of things that, from your perception, and sometimes rightfully, that uh, we can do better. Uh, and you make the public aware of those things, and you make us aware of them, but unless we're looking for it, sometimes we don't find it. And unless it's an internal affairs complaint, sometimes we don't find it. So that's why I say email me, because well, I, I stuff that we can do better. We a lot of the other police officers had that same theory, because when, when we come up, you know, there always seems to be some resistance to some of the people. And, you know, we come upon, I mean, you guys are out there all the time, and right. when there is an incident, right. yeah. Here, here's, film, here's how I look not, at it. It's, it's always just what it is is what it is when we film. You know, we don't direct the narrative, we don't, you know. But you create awareness of things yeah. that, you know, when we, if it's we, if it's something that we can do better, and then that's something we need to be aware of. We're, we're never going to be perfect. We're human beings. So make us aware of stuff. Yeah, and that's probably a better reason why there should be a critical eye placed on you guys. Because you all, you happen to be human. It's a human exactly right. Mistakes. The only way to solve that is not hiring. Sometimes those mistakes, though, when you're carrying a gun. Yep. And when we can, uh, you know, invest more time into training, more effort into training, you know, constantly build on the good training that we already have. Uh, but there's always, this, you can learn from every incident. You can learn from every interaction. And your critics will be your critics. That's the way it goes. You're always going to have critics, especially doing what we do. The day we get it perfect, uh, let me know when that happens, because we're not going to ever be. And it goes both ways, you know. Uh, uh, there's a lot that we can do to help the community to see things from our perspective, and also there's a lot that uh, we can do to help the community uh, just improve their quality of life and uh, have a better understanding of what it is we do. And, uh, well, we're going to make mistakes. We're fallible like everybody else. Yeah, well, I, say I, I do appreciate the talking, man. And you know, let, let me invite you. Okay. I, I believe this July, uh, we're going to be having a movie screening here called What Happened in Vegas. Okay. And I'd love Is that the guys. one that there's been some stuff out about already? I think I've seen a few trailers. Yeah, it was in, it was in the uh, Black Film Festival. Okay. It won an award. So, I mean, invite you, invite your co-workers. Yeah, okay. I think it would be like a really wonderful uh, thing, I mean, to bring the both communities together and sit, and there will probably be discussions afterwards. So, And it's okay. Listen, and here's the thing, too, is I, I've been the captain here for two and a half years. I can tell you that um, I've learned a lot from the people who tell us what we're doing right. I've learned just as much from the people who tell us what we do wrong. And, we try to build on that and get get those things right, get better. And then I always know, though, that the next challenge is, is right around the corner for something to do better. This is a fact. You know, just like with my own life, you know, there's always things I can do better outside of work. And I, you know, yeah. Oh, you know, I have a question. Do you guys, are you in the Hunt Ridge area? Do you yeah. go that far? I have a question. I, I came upon an incident where uh, two guys were attacked with a hammer. 
just recently in the past week. Yeah, the guys that were sleeping on the couches in the. Uh, uh, they, well, yeah, yeah, something like that. They, but some of these just came out of nowhere. And I mean, now are you guys issuing any sort of thing to the community to beware? Yeah, the, the, the one that I'm thinking, if it's the same one I'm thinking of, we've arrested the uh, person. And then when we had the murders back in uh, January, we did a lot of the outreach to the homeless community. Right, um, well, that's, that's what I brought it up. Well, this is we a separate was, and uh, more recent. Yeah, it incident. happened last week. So I know that they said that they the person, they, they got a self-help grade, arrested him. But now having a very similar incident, um, very violent. I actually got to see the end result and the damage that they did to this individual. It was pretty brutal. Um, and... Through some other information, I heard that there was an incident a few weeks prior that it's kind of spreading. Hey, be careful. Right. Are you guys... The I one, mean, the guys one that we uh, have, I know uh, the hammer or the weapon was actually Whatever. something one of the homeless guys had. So who knows what the whole dynamics are. We have a couple versions of how that occurred. Uh, I'll find out about the most, the one I think you're talking about and see. And yeah, we can do that. I have officers and we have a homeless liaison person that works for Metro. Uh, we certainly can do that outreach with us in the marshals. Uh, yeah. A lot of times it's these little arguments and uh, you know, that, that have a flashpoint. Uh, um, we know from our interactions with the homeless that they're very industrious. They, they do things to protect themselves. They do things to build shelters. So they always have tools and knives or something uh, in most cases. So there's always going to be that risk of something being involved. Uh, uh, but but they're at risk. That's, that's the thing. No, is, they, they are at risk. They're nice. Now... During my conversations, the term uh, squatter spotters came up. Is that something, are you familiar with well, that? The squatter laws that are on the books are definitely enforceable. So when they well, go no, into... No, 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 this is, they're called squatter spotters. And they seem to be a group of individuals that are taking um, action against people they perceive to be squatting. Okay, I haven't so heard that yet. That, that kind of like be, a, a neighborhood watch group that's... Well, you know, going to go to a little bit of an extreme. I, I, you know, I don't know much about them. That's why I was asking you, but I was kind of concerned with that kind of vigilantism okay. yeah. out there. I haven't heard that's that the yet. Most but vulnerable I'll, of our brothers and sisters. Yeah. So I'll keep my ear to the ground. I know the ones we had with the home. There was two guys that were uh, sleeping in a garbage dumpster area <laughs> on some couches, and there was a hammer involved. We arrested the suspect in that one. Uh, there's another one that's in my mind that I think we arrested the guy for that may have been in the, but the, both of these are in the last couple of weeks. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I know that they said they thought so, and now all of a sudden very similar incidents with the similar types of weapons. The big thing is, is to create services for people who are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, and mentally ill, and get them into those services. Because those are the big three things that contribute to homelessness. And if we can have some services as a, as a city and as a community uh, to get people to take those services, then we'd be on our way to kind of reducing the homeless population. It's a bigger... It is, is a big issue. There. And, I mean, I, I'm i on the streets a lot. And I, I know that one of the complaints is that these services, I mean, they're very restrictive. Right. Um, there was an initiative put forth called Housing First um, that they keep talking about. Where, well, one you know, of the challenges with getting them straight into housing is we haven't treated the things that caused them to be homeless first. Like we put them in housing and they're still addicted well, to drugs or alcohol, well, or they're not getting the, the help they need from The person that started that in Utah actually came down and had a talk about that. They have a it was about two years ago. Utah, and yeah. their, their explanation was that if you get people in housing, they're more likely to... Stop and the statistics actually behavior. bear that out. It franchises them. It's a normal thing to have a place to go to the bathroom. It's a normal right. thing to have a place to take a shower. Um, I, right? I, I that's where it starts. Is like just humanizing people. Right. Again. When they and that's, people that's one of the problems with percent reduction without any other services. They reduce their addictive behavior without anything else by thirty percent. And that when other things were. I introduced, you keep dropping and dropping. We have a contingent that went to San Antonio to look at, they have a thing called Haven for Hope, and the city is uh, invested in doing a project very similar to Haven for Hope, which is somewhat similar to what they do in Salt Lake. Uh, we'll see. The, the challenge we have now is there's a limited number of beds, especially in a wet shelter for people, and like you said, some of these services place restrictions, you know, because if you're intoxicated, you can't go in. Right, and if you have an addiction, how are you supposed you to break in. it? Right. And that's another and thing. And what we try to avoid is 
because uh, the people come to me all the time. Well, just arrest them. I'm like, well, that's not the answer. Filling no. the jail with making the jail. Well, unfortunately, a lot of times that is the perceived answer, and yeah. that's a problem because well, you now, guys tell me. I mean, you have somebody who's homeless, and then the right, they've got a criminal want? record, so now they can't no, get a job, and they yeah. can't get. They off can't the even get. They, they do a great thing in San Antonio. You know what they do in San Antonio? We'll try to get it on here. They do a great thing. A lot of the homeless we encounter can't get services or can't get their disability checks, can't get their military checks because they don't have identification. They're homeless, right? And in their travels, their their driver's license is lost. In San Antonio, they have a process where they have a police officer goes to this Haven for Hope. The folks that need identification, they drive to the police department, to central records. They do a quick fingerprint scan. The picture comes up. Now we know. If I, you know, you fingerprint, your picture comes up. We know that's you. That's who we know you to be. Well, they give them a certified letter. They give them everything, and then they take them to the Department of Motor Vehicles, and they get them ID. Yeah. Then they get ID. Now they're human again. That little piece of paper that says That's your also name. somewhat of a related issue because a lot of times when they do the homeless sweeps, yeah, what they do is they give them 10 minutes to get everything they own, right. and then they take it and throw it in the garbage. You know, sure and a lot of times that's that. yeah. personal I mean, property, yeah. including ID. And, I mean, there's a human part of that, too. I mean, you know, they the lose family the part. They, they lose family photos. They lose phone books with not to their family. And now they have no way of getting well, If you guys back. do a little research, <laughs> research me, and research the articles and the things I said about the homeless, you know, Hopefully you guys understand that I, I, that's something I care about. Uh, but it's the balance between dealing with that social issue and the things related to the homeless, then the homeless are related to violent crime, violent crime in general. Uh, I, I wish I had the answer to the homelessness because it's sad. Oh, well, I have a sister that's homeless somewhere else. So that's why it's kind of personal for me. Uh, you know, yeah, and you want it to be as safe as possible. I can't, so find you I can't even find it. I don't know what so, it is. Is there any sort of official, like, award for the most jaywalking citations? Uh, no. Because I was wondering if Officer Brown has won it, like, I'll take five a look years ago. Right <laughs> I, I heard it was on the wall. One from him? I got stopped for filming, and I went outside the, the outside of the crosswalk because they were in the crosswalk while they were harassing all the stuff. Which they almost hit him with their car when they pulled up next to him. And I went outside of the crosswalk because they were in the crosswalk, so I went around them. And you guys usually just film and stand there. You don't say yes, anything. Absolutely. I've seen you filming me over the years all over the place. You just, yeah, right. just film. We, yeah. we like and I know, of, I know of five people, at least, <laughs> that I know of personally that have been stopped by him for jaywalking based on they were filming. Listen, I, I mean, we're filming, but you could tell. You guys call him Jaywalking Brown? In the okay, he's I've the never guy, heard it. I've never heard He's that. the guy that, the he's the guy that okay. grabbed the girl who got uh, detained during the march the other day. He's quick. Yeah. For, go, well, for no, walking wasn't, outside wasn't of the him. gate. He was there, but that wasn't him I, that grabbed Well, him. maybe I didn't yeah. see it from the very beginning, yeah. but he was, the first, was. He was the first one that I saw. That well, and, and what had happened, too, is I think we had told her so many times uh, that when we still got there, she still refused, so it was like, you know, they decided that's what they were going to do. But I think they just wrote a warning citation or something or they let her go. Because she was back. From, from what I understand. Yeah. So they did something. But the, the idea was we're trying to keep everybody safe. And at some point, that road became so narrow that I think they were worried about her being in the streets. And it's very standoffish, I get it. But at least we got to talk at something like this where... You know, you guys aren't on the march and on the mission, and uh, you get to talk to me for a little bit. Write what you're going to write, say what you're going to say. Uh, we, we enjoy these, and I wish you guys would have some more. It's, yeah, we wanted to do one before it got too hot, and we'll probably do another one again in the fall. Uh, you don't give guys the impression that you like these. Didn't you chalk one of these one time or something? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you chalk today? Am I going to have to clean no. the sidewalk? No. You, do, you actually don't have to clean the sidewalk. You just, just leave it there. <laughs> oh, I can just leave it there? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it'll, it'll clean up eventually on its own. Well, listen, but. I'm not naive. I know I'm never going to make you guys go, you know what? Please, are all right. Do what you do. Do what you do, because it's going to eventually make us better. Listen, I, I mean, I, I'll come day, you know, for this kind of interaction and, and make sure uh, things that we'll be able to say, hey, you know what? The police are, are for the people. Yeah, do what you do. And, and if, you, if you don't get the impression that I am, then no, I'll keep working at it. Uh, because I am. I care about everything that you guys have mentioned. Uh, am I going to get it fixed overnight? I'm dealing with an area command. Uh, how long has been downtown? Boy, you know it, right? So, hundreds. All these areas have always had problems. Are they getting better incrementally? Little things at a time that sometimes you can't even notice? Yeah, we'll take those small victories and keep trying to build them. But, uh, anyway, I'm I, around if you guys I did want to challenge your guys to a bike race, too. A bike uh, race? Yeah. Still, you're still on that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so funny. The issue was I mean, like, I mean, like just a sprint? 
Mm-hmm. So you get on a bike. I got a fixie, so you guys would actually have an advantage. So you get on a bike, and we get on a bike, uh-huh. and we do a. Well, I'd like to do about 100 miles because I'm more yeah. about distance than I am yeah. about speed. But we can work out the distance. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure out. This might be so. I don't know how we do it. But we'd have to do it to raise money for a charity. <laughs> we can split two it. charities. One you guys agree, one we agree. 50 could go to the Food Not Bombs. And whatever you guys want. That's why I love when uh, you know he doesn't come to town. But Bruce Springsteen is one of my favorite musicians. And wherever he plays, he's always got a charity, whether it's uh, food for the homeless, whether it's, it's he always picks a local thing. And he hasn't been here in years, but it was uh, food banks usually is what he yeah. wants people to donate to. Uh, and we don't get enough of that. I get you know people laugh at me because I, I like Bruce Springsteen because of his you know everyone looks at his political views I look at the music listen to the music listen to the social commentary in his music uh, and it inspires me a little bit so uh, yeah just Google me see all the articles see all the times I've been sued you know, so. well that's the other thing is when uh, when the person was arrested in November uh, the sergeant who was there um, was the, that person had said, you know, I'm going to sue you. And the sergeant there was like, well, just get in line. <laughs> like, basically didn't care that people are suing the city over the things the cops are doing. Yeah, that's usually so, a typical uh, response. Hey, it's not you, the best answer. You know that there was an idea floated around that you guys should carry your private insurance so the city wouldn't be on the hook if there was any sort of judgment. Do you mean yeah, like um, liability insurance? I don't know, so. I don't know. I don't know how that would work. I'm a street cop. That's you, now you're talking things I don't understand. I, I know I don't even know how my own health well, insurance works. Do you have any opinion about the uh, the use of uh, qualified immunity to shield bad police from? Um, I, I don't think that always. I think that's a misconception. I don't think that that always happens. I think it happens a lot, but I think there are cases where officers don't have qualified immunity. So uh, it's kind of rare. Though. Yeah, it is, but it happens. So. Uh, and again, I think the, there's always going to be a balance between you know, what was the officer doing, was he on duty, what were his perceptions, which people have the other side, and what were their perceptions. And that's always going to be two things that, you know, especially in tense situations. Uh, so I think that's why that exists, but I don't think it's applied as much, or I don't think everyone gets it. I can I know in particular cases where it hasn't. Been. See it. And what does it really mean anyway if you don't have qualified immunity? Well, what it means is that you're actually responsible for the actions that you do. So if somebody... Right, but if the agency so, still chooses to indemnify you, uh, well, qualified immunity sometimes just protects you from having to testify, I think, right? No, it, it, it means that if, even if you're found guilty in a lawsuit, the city pays and you don't. So right. if a cop goes out and falsely arrests somebody or does worse, like for instance murders somebody, they actually aren't held responsible. The city just pays it. So it's, but I think even it's if basically like nothing to them. Yeah, but even if you don't have qualified immunity, you still have, uh, if you were acting within the course of your duty, I think they call that you know, indemnified or you have indemnification. Well, I think, the agency. So I don't well, exactly I think that's how what the, when you have qualified immunity, that means you're indemnified. Right? But if you don't have it, sometimes you're still indemnified. Because I know people that didn't have qualified immunity, but they were still indemnified. And that's why I'm saying it's confusing to me on how old I am. Now you're talking to me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to walk around and say hi. Right, Thank yeah, you guys yeah. for being So, for here. the record, you don't actually have to be a lawyer to tell somebody what their rights are, right? Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I was a little confused about yeah. that because I know another officer. Yeah. So wait, what was that. the scenario? <laughs> um, they're, they're requesting somebody at Circle Park. Okay. And he advised the person that he did not have to answer questions. Okay. And he told him, mind his own business, or this is not your business. And he said, why? And he said, because you're not a lawyer. Yeah, I was just, I was just confused about that. I always thought that everybody should know their rights. And I Anyone imagine. that's watched TV at some point knows that there's something with these, with, with you know, you always hear, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to say, you know. Well, that's right. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that. Yeah. And even officers. And how many cops are trained to do it in a uh, deceptive yeah, way. So you have to be an attorney to advise someone on their constitutional right. rights. One case confusing for people is they think, well, I don't have to identify myself. Or I don't have to just, uh, you know, they think that's part of Miranda. The, you know, the Miranda one pertains to if you're in custody and we're well, you. Yeah. You have to actually be detained before you're like, right. in custody right. plus interrogation. Right. So, you know, identification is like you can just give a name. There's no reason to pull out ID. And it's funny, in the ni- I'm, I'm on the department almost 19 years, that, that changes all the time. What, what 
When are you required to identify yourself? What counts as identification? When are you? When don't you have to? Do passengers in a car have this constantly changing? So. Yeah, let me just get one more. Um, the crisis intervention training. How are you guys doing with that? Were you guys on that? That's still an ongoing project. Yeah, yeah all the new the officers, officers that come through the academy get it. All the field training officers have it. Uh, and it is a recertification process for it. I think every couple of years. I don't know exactly when, uh, but that's one of the tools we give folks. Uh, but we got to remember we're dealing, you know, in, in, in uh, those type of situations. It's just one more tool we give our officers and we expect them to be perfect each and every time. Well, I, I read some things, and, and one of the the ideas was it's like, listen, we're police officers. We're not. You know, that's not our, we're not psychologists, we're not psychiatrists, we're not, you know, so to put this extra burden on us, you have to kind of expect that there's going to be a lot of issues, because that's not our... And it really is to educate the officers and get them an understanding of when they might be dealing with somebody in, in a mental crisis, and then also an education on the resources that, that are available, uh, and certain uh, terms and language and things that you can use to deal with someone who's in a crisis, and the goal, obviously, is to eliminate have any type of force applied in our situation. Reduce the use of force, de-escalate force in our situation. Try to slow it down so that, so that we don't have to apply force. Which is another thing that is always going to be uh, a challenge for police. It's going to be useful. Right. So, I'm on the move. Um, yeah, yeah. Understand. Do we even give out press passes? No. To make this for yourself? Yeah. Pretty cool. But I am actually a member of the press. And <laughs> There is, you know, the legalities of press passes, right? No. There actually is none. Yeah, so it's essentially a company ID. Yeah. Just tell us who I work for. In other cities, they do have media credentials. They do some. They issue, and that means you get like special access to time scenes. Yeah, but that's through the companies themselves. Issue. Yeah, we don't have that here. Yeah, no. We just ask you where to go and where not to go. All right, you guys have fun. All right, thanks for coming. That's cool. Jimmy Captain Walsh, very nice man.